Hello everyone, today we are diving into the topic that is completely reshaping the world of data engineering we know it. It's AI, generative AI. In fact, I feel like I'm in a perfect position to talk to you about this, especially for data engineers because I have been a data engineer for about three years of my career and then I moved to an AI engineering when I was at Google and right now I'm at DoorDash where I'm working on AI related products within the data engineering team. We know that a lot of tasks that we do manually today are increasingly being taken over by AI. So naturally, a lot of people fear that AI is going to take over the entire field of data engineering and it's going to make all the data engineers jobless. In fact, this is the most common theme I've observed in all of my videos, questions uh, in the comment section. You can see it all here. But here's the catch. It is not a signal to step back. In fact, it's a call to evolve. Data engineers have the great opportunity to just go into this field of AI where everybody is relatively new to it and plant their feet well before anybody else can. Now consider this, when SQL was invented, right, it was groundbreaking and even until now, SQL is one of the most versatile tool that data engineers use. But nowadays, a lot of AI models can automate this part of SQL generation. If you give it the schema and the column description of each column within your table, it's going to generate very good query of any SQL questions that you answer. But what do you need to communicate with that model? Well, that's where prompt engineering comes into play. I feel that role of prompt engineering and data engineering is going to be as significant as understanding SQL. This is just one example. We know that data engineers do a lot more than just writing SQL, but AI will impact every part of it. In this video, I'm going to share five completely free courses that you can take right now to get started. And it starts with understanding, learning the basics of generative AI to learning prompt engineering to mastering it and also eventually go ahead and building a data based application using generative AI. And before I start with my course recommendation of these five courses, I would just like to highlight that none of them are sponsored. These are the courses that I genuinely recommend people when they tell me that they want to start learning generative AI or LLM. Learning these courses will ensure that you have future proofed your career in data engineering because learning only data and no AI is not going to cut it anymore. I'm also going to share completely free bonus resource link at the end of this video, so stay tuned. So if you are ready to stay ahead of the curve, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, grab a cup of coffee and sit back and enjoy this video. So before we jump into the nitty gritty of LLM based applications and prompt engineering, it's important to understand the basics of generative AI and that's where this first link can help you. It's basically an introduction to large language models. This is a very short course, about 30 minutes, introductory micro learning course that explores the LLM model and it's posted by Google Cloud. So if you go to this link, you can directly look at the video, the document and also there's a quiz and you get a course badge at the end of the course. Once you've covered the basics of generative AI, the next thing that you need to learn and this is again as I have said that prompt engineering is going to be as important as SQL uh, so do not take this lightly the next course is about how do we master our prompt engineering skill when you go to learnprompting.org I wanted to start with this chat GPT for everyone so that's the free introductory course from that you go to the next level and that is introduction to prompt engineering now it's basically about how do you structure your prompts what are zero shot what are few shot like the pros and cons of using one prompt versus another so see what all things are included so it's about what is prompt engineering what is a good prompt with an example understanding llm llm reasoning and then understanding some complex problems you also get quiz now uh, when you create an account on this website you will get about i think three days of free trial and that is sufficient for you to take this course and complete it so i recommend doing that now the third course is a little bit of an advanced course where it's about generative ai for developers it starts with an introduction to image generation attention mechanism so if you don't know there was a paper published on attention mechanism and that is the paper on which a lot of today's transformer or large language models are based out of so I do recommend give this paper a read if you can. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to find it uh, for free anywhere on the internet. Uh, so this course talks about that encoder decoder architecture, the transformer or BERT models. So if you don't know, GPT full form is generative pre-training transformer. So it is also under the hood, a transformer model. So it talks about that. Uh, and then it talks about some Google cloud specific tools like Vertex AI Studio. However, just because it is hosted on Google Cloud does not mean that 
uh, that knowledge is not transferable vertex ai studio is basically a suit in which you can uh, create different prompts and everything you can also write code for it to interact with the api on the back end you can do pretty much the same thing on any jupyter notebook on any cloud platform it talks about vector search and embeddings which are super important by the way for large language model contextual applications uh, because a lot of times you have to limit the amount of context that you pass to the language model so that it can make sense out of it and vector search searches for similar kind of information available out of the large corpus of data and then feeds that smaller subset to the la large language model it also talks about responsible ai principles like privacy safety and all that so this is a longer course it might take you more time but it's still completely free it also has a lot of hands-on i especially recommend doing all the hands-on after this course we are going into the thick of it right now we have to do a lot of coding also to understand how to interact with these models using backend systems so the next course it is hosted on deeplearning.ai if you don't know deeplearning.ai is a really good website to learn about anything related to machine learning or deep learning but this particular course it is completely free and it's called langchain for llm application development so Langchain, if you don't know, it's basically a framework that allows you to chain your prompts together. So imagine you have opened up ChatGPT and you asked a question and then it provided a response and you asked another question which was a follow-up of your previous question or maybe you didn't understand something in the response so you asked another follow-up question. So obviously ChatGPT automatically understood that what you are talking about without losing context of uh, previous turns. I would say it is an oversimplification of what Langchain is, but that was the principal concept of how this framework was uh, produced. It is an open source framework, so learning this is going to be super important because Langchain or something like Langchain will definitely be used in any uh, production grade LLM application or data pipelines. So it talks about how to handle memories, how to create these chain of prompts, how to do question and answer, how to do LLM evaluation. LLM evaluation is a separate topic in itself. So this covers that as well, how to create different Langchain agents. So agents within Langchain are basically complex LLM chatbots. So an agent can look into some tools, it can go through some Python code that you provide, it can execute that. It combines that with the power of Langchain and LLM application. So obviously it makes your code really, really powerful. And the great thing about this course is that, let's take a look at models and prompts and parsers. So when you open this, your screen will be split into two uh, sections. On the right side, you'll be able to see the video of the course and on the left side, you have access to your own Jupyter notebook and you don't have to pay for the compute that you use. So you can execute the code in this notebook as much as you want. Uh, it's completely free. And on the right side, it will also tell you that which cell to execute and each cell, what is the significance of it? Uh, and what happened behind the scenes because of the execution. This is one of my favorite course out of these five because of how compact it is and the amount of value that it packs. Now this last course combines everything that we have learned so far about generative AI. So when you open this, you will find a couple of options. One is the option to purchase the course or next is to audit only. Now audit only is a very good option where you don't pay anything and it you will have access to all the course materials, all the videos, all the hands-on. You just will not get access to quiz, which is I think completely fine. This course is divided into three different weeks and it's basically about creating generative AI or LLM based applications. And it has a demo of how you do that on AWS. Uh, again, the knowledge is transferable. It doesn't matter whether you choose to follow this course on AWS or on something else. Okay, now onto the bonus free resource that I was telling you about. There is a GitHub repository called LLM Data Hub. If you open up this repository, it has a lot of data sets which are well suited for LLM based data pipelines or applications. So for example, if you're interested in finance uh, related data sets, all you have to do is just do a search of finance. It's basically a collection of all different types of data sets on which you can easily build LLM data pipelines or applications. So after taking all these five courses, I do recommend that try something on your own, pick up any one of the cloud platform of like GCP or AWS or Azure, doesn't matter, but build an LLM application or build a data pipeline that somehow uses LLM and you can make use of these data sets when you build that your own project. And once you create that project, don't forget to link it in your resume as well so that it can help you get shortlisted on roles which do require generative AI knowledge along with data engineering. So that is it. As, as I said at the start of this video, I do recommend that you have to learn AI 
if not now you will be forced to learn it two years down the line so why not be just proactive and start future proofing your career as soon as possible and i hope this video was useful if there's anything that you want to ask or you want to talk about make use of the comment section below let's talk about it uh, do not forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel see you next time